Other talk stations use words like savage. <laughs> Sounds brutal. Hey, it's all good. Your Superstation, AM 1050, News Talk KCAA. You ready for the pain? I feel completely dirty when you're done. Irvin, are you ready for blast off? <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to eat Indian food, man. How are you blasted off? <laughs> Prematurely. We are. The three guys rant. Arvin, Mike, and Phil. I already feel good. Call us at 855-69-3GUYS. And if you didn't understand that, let me tell you to English, because that was Puerto Rican. You are listening to the three guys rant. 855-69-3GUYS. That's 693-48. 693? <laughs> you going or am I going? All right, I'm going. This is the three guys. Or yo? Yo primero, okay, yo primero. Dale, okay. This is the three you guys go. rant. Estos somos los tres muchachos. Cállate los cinco, güey. Shut up. This is the three guys rant. Somos los tres muchachos. <laughs> Are you gonna do everything in Spanish? Que si voy a qué? Todo en español. The three guys rant. Los tres muchachos. NBC News Radio. Las noticias de NBC. KCAA. KCAA. 10.50 AM. 10.50 AM. En sintonía. <laughs> Boy, my head hurts <laughs> just listening to you. Man, I can't believe this guy, man. We don't have Phil in studio, so Arvin is all, you know, he's... We, we have the as, pillar. As we call it here, he's butt hurt. The pillar of uh, reasoning in this room is not here. So I know that... Uh, no, since he's not here, let's talk about him, man. Let, let's talk about him. But first yeah. off, I want to start off with uh, NBC News. I know for a fact has somebody on staff that they pay just to listen to our show because we so push the envelope. Oh, I'm going to say you. You you and your F-bombs that keep slipping by. I don't slip any F-bombs. So here. I'm going to say today, this gentleman's going to earn his paycheck because I have no idea where the show's going to go today. I can tell you where the show's going to go if you uh, drop any F-bombs. Hey, man. Off the air. That's where it's going to go. I have not slept in about two days, and I'm amped up on energy drinks right now. I told you, just some preparation, age, and the pads, and you'll be able to sleep like a baby, man. Prepar what the hell does preparation age have to do with you sleeping? I don't know. If we, well, because you keep shaking your, your butt up on the chair like, como que te pican las hemorroides. That's because I have IBS. I have itchy booty syndrome today. Okay. But uh, I want to... That's what soap and water was invented, right? What? That's why soap and water was invented. Never heard of that. All right. I go down to the the Rio Grande and just kind of sit there. Is that why it's brown? <laughs> That's why it's brown, absolutely. So uh, I want to start. You know what? Talking about that, I, before we get into anything, because I know we wouldn't be able to say this story otherwise, um, I know that you're not feeling too good. Yes, that's um, right. I know you're, 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 we've been calling you crotch rat here at the office. Right. I, I'm going to say it's because you've been popping too many Viagras. If that was the case, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> gonna say. It. I'm not gonna go there. Oh, that's, but that's not what. That's that's not the reason. But anyways, I know I wanted. I wanted to bring it back a while ago. But in case you missed it, I, I'm gonna give you this. But I know you can't even see. Um, you should take your wife down to Naples, Italy. And I know if if Alan over there, the engineer is listening. Naples, Italy, Italy, is actually getting a rise in visitors, um, customer satisfaction, of whatnot. If I, if I read this correctly, they're literally getting a rise. They're literally getting a rise. So I don't know if you've ever heard of anything called the devil stink. No. Well, apparently, I, and again, I don't know how this came about, but for anybody listening, if anybody's ever heard of the drive through sex bays, sex bays near a volcano, call in. And the number here is 855-693-GUIS. Again, 693-7, Jesus, not even 726. What is it? 4897. Um, what people are doing it, and, and again, I got to say that this has got to be a smart entrepreneur. What, what this gentleman did is he actually did bays to where couples go down to the base of the volcano. And for some reason, this devil stink, it's, it's the, is it sulfur that comes out of a volcano? Amongst other things. Yeah. Right. Somehow is, is natural Viagra. So what this guy did is he set up bays with curtains around it. And is basically turning people's cars into, into again, for anybody streaming, make sure you check out KCAARadio.com or the three guys rent.com and you'll see everything we're talking about. So this gentleman actually set a base, charged people to come in to what I'm assuming is, is public property, 
and the stench in, in the air, I guess, is Viagra for gentlemen. Uh, uh, if, if you're not streaming, basically what it looks like, it's like cubicles for a car, and it's got basically a blue tarp in the back end <laughs> hung like a curtain. <laughs> and you just kind of <laughs> drip it across, and you and your woman, apparently, or your man, who you know, if it was Arvin, your man, uh, you can go and have sex in there. So, again, it, it's a drive through sex bay for anybody that's out there listening, because I know the way your brain thinks, Mikey. Not drive through movie theaters. You know, it's got to be short amount of times that are there because, again, sulfur is, in large amounts, is toxic. But, you know, maybe So, I, I take it it is an active volcano, right? Because there's, there's a lot know, of eruptions correct. happening. <laughs> what, what kind of eruptions are you talking <laughs> about? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it, terribly <laughs> sexy. <laughs> it is an active volcano. Uh, but it hasn't gone off in hundreds of years, you know. It, well, it, it's going off every night now. <laughs> During the day, even more so, too. But I thought it was funny that, you know, somehow somebody takes something as simple as that and turns it into an actual business. Well, and what's funny is, does it even really work, man? Or is this guy just playing on these people's stupidity? Well, you know what they say, the, the uh, what is it, the power of the mind is very strong. A everybody that's gone, that they've oh, actually oh, talked oh, to. Oh, oh. What would you say? Part of the mind is very strong. That's what I said. Is that Which right? part is that? The whole, the whole mind. The whole mind. The so right then side? it's not part of the mind. I didn't say part. I you said, said part. Power. Power of the mind. You, you want to just keep saying you, everything you, I'm saying gonna, in Spanish? You're going to feel the power of my pimp hand. <laughs> so anyways, can I get back to my story? Yes, go ahead. Um, no, I just think it's interesting that, that uh, who knows if it's real. I, I, have, I didn't come across any kind of uh, medical studies. But I did think it was it was pretty Really? Genius. I mean, the guy just opened this and you don't think they've done medical studies already? I I don't know. Have they? Do you know anything about well, it? I don't know. It just sounds like something that they would do. Well, it seems like you uh, have some kind of knowledge about this. Wow. Oh, interesting, man. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, so so why don't we do that here, man? You know of a volcano here in L.A.? We can make it. Up. Let's go to the Brea Tar Pits, man. And we just say that the, the, the fumes from the tar... <laughs> I swear. I swear you make things up as we go. All right. So uh, on on a lighter side, or not even a lighter side, on a sad note, um, there will be no Tony, no no Sopranos movie or no returning season of The Sopranos. Well, we don't know that. Well, you're right. We don't know. But for anybody listening that hasn't heard, James Gandolfini, which is Tony Soprano, died last night. And uh, what did he die of? I know we're talking about it. Uh, cardiac arrest. And and the sad part about it, other than the fact that he died, apparently he was uh, vacationing with his 13-year-old son, and he collapsed in front of him, and it was the boy who called the uh, front desk of the hotel to get help. Where was he at? Uh, Italy. Was he at this volcano? I don't know. We have to dig into this. <laughs> no, yeah, but, I mean, I, lo I loved it. I know you were saying that you, you've never seen a single episode of The Sopranos. Never. Not a single one? Nope. Not even a part of an episode? No. Never, it never Why? It never grabbed me. It never grabbed my attention. It's a good show. The last two seasons truly blew, and, and they sucked. Uh, but I know we were briefly talking about that. That would actually be a hell of a... It's normally what happens when it blows. It sucks. But go ahead. Really? Anyways, um, I think it'd be a hell of a premise. Um, I know we were talking about it right before the show started. That would probably be the perfect way to uh, either bring the show back or actually finally do that movie that everybody's been talking about for a while is is started off with tony getting whacked and i, I, I know we we're talking about it before before the show and i was really disappointed i gotta say that the way that the show ended in my opinion is probably one of the worst endings period regardless if it's a movie or a show or anything like that it just really really just left you just kind of i just wasted the last seven years of my life it was really that bad but if they were to bring him, bring it, uh, bring it back, that'd be an interesting concept. Have Tony be killed right at the beginning and continue it from there. But why would you feel that way about a show? Because one or two seasons weren't that that good that you wasted seven years of your life. It was just I bad. Mean, is uh, it, it really? Is it really that? It important? was really. It was really that bad. But is it really that important in your life at the time that? Oh, absolutely. It, so if it had a uh, an ending that you agreed with. It would have been the best seven years of your life. Oh, absolutely! I know you don't get out much, and you choose, wow. you refuse to pay to go see so, a so movie. You, so you basically base your life on the quality of the TV you watch. If you're watching something no, no, no. crappy, no, 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 you it, have no, your no, life no. is crappy at that moment. What, 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 if it's good, you're having a good. No, no, your life no. Is good. 
What I'm saying is that I rarely have time to watch TV, and when I do the hand- So you do. When have you ever seen me watch TV? Here at work? Every day? I don't even have a TV here. You're streaming stuff. <laughs> Anyways, what I was saying is I watch- I don't have time to watch a lot of TV. Um, when I do watch something, I do get into it, and it, I follow it religiously. That happened to be one of the shows- uh, the second to the last season kind of just dragged out, and then the last season just really blew. And the way that the whole thing ended, just but well, you were like telling me that, cliff. like the ending scene, uh, they're basically sharing a plate of fries and onion rings. Right? The it, hell it's, kind it's, of mob? That's that's what I'm that? that's what I'm saying. So you see, now I'm glad I never watched it. So basically, the way the show ended, and again, this isn't a spoiler because this goes back years. It's been years since the show's even been on, but. There, there, there was a few people were getting killed. People were being, you know, whacked off. <laughs> I don't know even know if that's right, but let's go with whacked off. Um, and at the very end, they kind of get through it, and and you're expecting Tony to be killed or somebody to be murdered. So, so in you you were basically hoping the main character would get killed. No, I was hoping that he wouldn't, but I thought that there so would. So then your dream just at, came through, man. He, I, he, I thought that there he, would he at died, least bro. be an he died. attempt. So you should be happy. He died. In real life, though, he 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 was he seemed like a great guy. He seemed like a good actor. He did that movie with John Travolta. That he was good in that. No, the, the only thing you know, I, I know he was a good actor. The the one thing I liked about him, there was an HBO series about uh, was returning. It was it called The Sopranos? No, no, it was a documentary actually about returning um, vets from Iraq and, and Afghanistan. Okay. And basically, a, a lot of these guys that have been through an IED attack or a, a near death experience in the field. Uh, they call that day, that date, their their living day. Okay. So, the 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 uh, series was about that. These guys would sit with him one on one, and relay the, the stories of what happened. I never heard about that. Yeah, and it was pretty pretty touching, pretty moving. And he, I think he had a big part in uh, in that series. And I've seen some of those episodes, and I really enjoyed it. And it, it, it how shed how light into into his the way he felt about. Uh, how many episodes the, did they the do? Soldiers. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, I never I heard about that. Was yeah. this recent? Yeah, it was recent. It's probably probably about a year, year and a half. Uh, but Just yeah, so he seemed like a good guy. But you know, here's the thing. I mean, he's di he died as a sad, but I wonder what if the mob or the, the Italian mob killed him <laughs> for playing a bad mobster well, here, you, man. You, you're talking about uh, trying to start con uh, uh, not controversy, um, conspiracy theories. But think about it. I mean, he, he happens to be over there, and they're probably not happy. Uh, you you put you know you put, you didn't put portray a wise guy the way we think he should have been portrayed. So. Uh, yeah, I, I know a lot of people had had an issue with it specifically because, um, you know, what 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 God or what mobster goes to uh, see a shrink and basically put your family, uh, your your whatever you're doing out there. And and I know I, I know you didn't see a show, so you won't remember. But yeah, well, they, they it they wasn't full disclosure, but he gave enough to where he could have gotten a lot of people into trouble with the law. Uh, well, in theory, that's patient doctor privilege. It depends. That's, that's Monsters typically don't do that. They just turn informants and spill their guts right. to the FBI. Anyways, we'll be back after this break. You listen to the Three Guys Rant on KCAA 1050. Transmitiendo en vivo en Los Angeles y alrededor del mundo. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. The Three Guys Rant, coming to you live every Thursday from 5 to 6. And you can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in, because one has Tourette's, the you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen, and you never know what's going to happen. 855-69-THREE-GUYS, G-U-Y-S, and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Hey, bro, this is a good game. You know what would make it better? What, bro? A michelada. A michelada? What's a michelada? A michelada is somewhere in the middle of a Mexican Bloody Mary and a Mexican margarita. Oh, I got you covered, bro. You got a cup in your pocket? No, sir. I got my pocket-sized michelada. Mucho macho michelada. pocket size? pocket size. so you can take it with you anywhere you go. Where'd you get that at? At the nearest convenience store, and you can also buy it at muchomachomichelada.com. You know what would make it better? 
after we get drunk, if they had a line, we can call. We can call their drunk line. You can leave a message and then log on to the site and listen to your stupidity afterwards. What's that number? It's 855-MICHE69. What's that number again? 855-MICHE69. Awesome. Mucho macho michelada. Hi, I'm Paul Lane, host of the KCAA Morning Show, and I'd like to take a few seconds to tell you about Pollen Burst. You may not know, but I've been confined to a wheelchair for over 20 years, and I've always looked for ways to increase my energy, mental clarity, and just feel good. Well, I found it in Pollen Burst. It's natural, delicious, and easy to take, and I think you should try some too. To find out more, email me at paul at kcaaradio.com. That's paul at kcaaradio.com. Hey, join me so we can burst together. Ticketsurgeon.com reaches at 855-WIN-4199. Did you get caught speeding, texting while driving, or doing anything else you weren't supposed to do? Give us a call. Don't miss work. Don't lose out on the money. Don't get any more points. What about your insurance? Let us fight for you. The Ticketsurgeon.com at 855-WIN-4199. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And you can listen to us every Thursday at 2 p.m., right here on KCAA Radio. What do we talk about, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. And we <laughs> dance a whole lot. In fact, if you want to watch us every day, you can go to AaronandKellyLive.com. That's AaronandKellyLive.com. Check it out. Streaming live from Los Angeles, the Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetheeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. Y ya regresamos otra vez al programa de ustedes muchachos. If you're watching on screen right now, you can see, if you're streaming, you can see that Phil, and you probably recognize the laugh. Phil walked in. He was a little bit late. He was having a late lunch or something. Or was it the day you're a Manny Petty day? Okay, first of all, I don't Manny Petty, oh. ever. Okay, that's you, for you two most. Well, I'm you, sorry, you, so you, you, so you, you went to the body shop. I'm sorry? To get your toes done. Hey, you know what? I don't get my toes done. I don't get my nails done. I don't get my brows done. Okay, that's what you hoes do. You know what's okay. funny, dude? There that, that, would be a good, that would be a hell of a name for a shop that does many patties for men. The body shop. I got to say, there is nothing like a good toe sucking. That's all I'm going to say. And I've told you, I don't like my toes sucked. <laughs> so quit trying. <laughs> you, you like having them spit on? <laughs> What's funny is, you know, I, I walked into the office the other day. Mike was taking a nap on the couch. And that look on Arvin's face. I was like, mm, well, well, he ha He had Mike's whole right foot in his mouth. Mm, lunch. I, I, I didn't even know what the hell to say. And the worst part was Mike slept through it. I know. I was just like, no wonder, man. I, I stuck my, my, sh just my, foot in my, <laughs> my foot in my shoe and it was all wet. I, I, I didn't understand that. It's like Mike didn't even move. Just so, you know, the funny part, though, is I'm wondering, are you subconsciously attracted to Arvin because you allowed it? You you were moaning while he was sucking your foot. I had I started throwing up in my mouth. I had to leave the office. No, well, you, see, you, see what, you see what happened while you were gone. We accidentally on purpose got locked into a restaurant <laughs> with, with no lights on earlier. <laughs> he missed that. <laughs> so the two of you uh, were bonding, I take it? And this guy, all, all, all I'm going to say is that he swears that he's, he's feeling around for the light switch. And I'm like, well, so why are you hands in your mouth in my pants? <laughs> <laughs> all I'm going to say is the top of his head was right at my waist level. That's all I'm going to say. Whew. All wow. right. So have, what have we talked about, guys? What did I miss in the first segment? Do we already uh, give our condolences to James Gandolfini's family? Yep. And we figured out that the, the Italian mob killed him for playing a crappy uh, white guy. But, but, but do you understand that he, he, he died of uh, cardiac arrest? That's what they're saying. They're that was, good, see, they're that good was over a, there, man. That was, that was a good mob hit right there. Uh -huh. He died of natural causes. Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't go with that? I will today. <laughs> That's what happens when I'm running late. <laughs> well, what is your whole take on the whole thing? Uh, to, to, honestly, to me, it was, it was more frightening. It's, you know, it caught me off guard because, you know, Gandolfini, I mean, okay, he, he's not overly fluffy, you know? I'm sorry. What, what does that mean, overly fluffy? Well, you know, because if, I, you know, if we have to start looking at health situations here, um, you know, I mean, it, it makes you wonder. The guy didn't look like he was horribly out of shape. You know, I mean, right, no, right. no worse off for the wear. Hell, I think he, he, he probably ate better food than we do. Absolutely, because he can afford it or right. could have. 
So the fact that he dropped dead at 51, I, I think, to be honest, I'm still in shock by that. Because, you know, obviously we talk about when I was in high school, 50 seemed like a million years old. But, you know, now at the ripe old age of 43, hey, he's a youngster. Now it's like, ah, 60s is the new 40. <laughs> so, so I'm in my 20s still. I'm sorry, is that what you go around telling the ladies? Yep. You know, I'm just, so, yeah, that's my theory on the whole thing. Um, it, uh, yeah, it bothered me. Yeah, it, it's, I came across it actually because somebody had posted. You, you came across it today. No, no, no. I came across it last night, um, real late last night because I but guess you know he, was, irony, he was. Hold on, hold on. This is what I don't understand. The three of us share offices a, in a the bed? same building. Oh, I thought you were going to go with the bedroom. Okay. okay. That wouldn't matter. So yesterday, about 4.30, I tell Mike, damn, there's not going to be a Sopranos movie. He says, why? Okay, said, did you just hear what you said? Hold on. Going. You said, I told Mike. Wait, 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 wait. And then I look to my left, and I'm like, hey, Tony Soprano's dead. He just dropped dead. And you just gave me this look like, okay. Like you always do, because nothing where matters this? to you. Because this doesn't even sound familiar. You were sitting, you were sitting at sitting your there. desk. And then I walked <laughs> over to tell the missus. Yeah, and I heard Claude go, oh, my God. Yeah. Really? But yet you, you see. So that you find out you just last proved, night. You just proved what I always say. I don't listen to people's conversations. I don't even listen to the conversations <laughs> I'm involved in. But no, no, no. And again, I don't know if it was just training or if he was training for a movie. But I know and I know that he's actually a follower. So I'll give him a shout out. Ten Goose Boxing, which I think is up in the Burbank area. Uh, he's trained a lot of, a lot of professional boxers. Um, he had posted a picture of him recently in the gym to where he was working out. So I don't know if it was... He knew he had health issues or if he was training for a movie, but that's how I came across it, actually through Instagram. So after that is when I started looking into it. But, uh, yeah, I, at first I thought it was almost um, not a prank, but I just thought somebody was just screwing around. Really a prank. So let me see. There, the, there's worse things out there. The headlines on CNN says James Gandolfini dropped CNN. dead. I didn't see all that. <laughs> okay. I saw a picture. I all saw right. a picture. All right. You know me. If it, if there isn't if there isn't any pictures in the book, I have no interest reading it. All right. So <laughs> since we're talking about uh, celebrities, let's talk about a semi-celebrity, Paula Dean. She was uh, interviewed for a deposition. Dude, I'm not touching that one with a ten foot pole because America is still overly polarized, and if we make the wrong comment, the Reverend Rhyme Master Al Sharpton will be right there in that chair, and he can call at eight five five six nine. Three guys. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little confused. Isn't she white? Does he only, he only protect the colored folks? Yeah, but she she. Do you in not that read position, the news at all? No. Do you not know who? Do you she, know who Paula Dean is? Yeah, she makes delicious sausages out in like Louisiana or something. Not Jimmy Dean, you moron. Paula Dean. Are, are they husband you, and wife? <laughs> <laughs> what do you look at my crotch when you say delicious sausages? How? <laughs> Well, she was I being interviewed in a deposition because she she's being sued. Did Farmer John sue her? I mean, I, no. I, I'm missing the story here. Well, <sighs> one of the questions was, is has she ever used the N-word? Because the person suing her happened to be black. And her, her response was, yes, of course. Because she uses it in a lot of jokes. Apparently, she's told racist jokes to black people. She's um, told racist jokes to yeah, black people. Yeah, and she didn't. She okay, didn't but you realistically, aside from me, but here, who no, no, here, 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 but here's one of the things. One of the questions. <laughs> oh, he, he, I I like that. No, yeah, but here's one of the things that she added to that. I can't determine what offends another person. Now, if you live in 2013 America and you don't think or you don't know that the N word is going to offend somebody, especially a black person. Okay, but hold you're on, a hold moron. on. No, no, no. You know what? Her defense, though. Oh, okay. Let me hear this. You and I, you and I actually own a portion of a business. Oh, I thought you were going to go somewhere completely oh, different. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I know, I the crap thought. out of me, man. But you I'm and like, I, that you is filled at the own three a guys partial rent. business, and we have three black associates. Right. Okay. So to her point, you know, and we've heard them, and even you and I, and what do they tell us? Oh, that's okay. We're black. We can say it. You guys can't. Ha, ha, ha. Right. So, okay. If, but we know that with our three associates, if one of us were to slip... They wouldn't even bat an eye. Right. Okay. So that's what, if you read further, her statement about, you know, where I live, the people I've worked with, the things I've done, I can understand that if you're around somebody all day and all night, okay, and they're of the African-American persuasion and everybody's using the term. What the hell is African-American persuasion? You're either black or, or you're not. You're it's, not it's like, you're not, it's like you don't have a persuasion to be. Okay. So they're black. All right. Okay. 
if they're doing the comments to her point and everybody's you know flinging the n-word and then she does it and one person's having a bad day and decides at that moment now it's no longer right so i can understand what she's saying because in her mind she wasn't using it as a look there, there's one of the things she wasn't using it as a racial epithet okay so she says i don't know what offends people so and I, and I and I I'm saying that I know there's been a great. It's kind of like the, Bro, next, the, the Hispanics. She says she doesn't know that the N word offends people. Really? Bro, and you think that that? No, you, you believe that? On. Yes, I do, and uh, I'll tell you, what, it's like us. Did we're, we're you brown. see the movie Django? They didn't know. It was <laughs> 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 okay, but hold on. We're brown. Right. Okay. I'm half black, but yeah. Whatever. Okay. So, we're in a room, and how many times have I said beaner or wet back? Right. And people then are like... Because we're brown, so we can say it. Okay, but how many other Hispanics have come to me and, you're an a-hole? Because they're all offended. These are the same people who called me an a-hole who didn't like George Lopez because he made fun of Mexicans. Mexicans are funny. Okay? You know what? And he's yeah. done a hell of a job. Okay, but where I'm going doing with it, it is, to her point, you don't... I mean, we've been in rooms where people are losing their minds. They'll make fun of every other ethnicity, but the second you or I say beaner or wetback... Oh, well, that's just wrong. And that's what's wrong with America well, today. And I'm saying that I can understand her point that she's not going to sit there if she's in with a particular group of people that maybe she felt comfortable with. Now, let me ask you this. I, I don't buy it. Yeah, you Go don't ahead, buy anything because you're a freaking cheapskate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome, Harvin. <laughs> right here, baby. You get some love for that so, one. Anyways, I have a there question. some love for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Go. What's your question? Look, if you want to comment on this one, you know, for those of you driving on the 57 who'd like to shoot us, 855-69-4897 or 855-69-3-GUYS. Is that it? Yeah, well, I just want to make sure they can call and well, tell I, Mike he's wrong. Let, let me ask you this. Do you think there's a standard for a celebrity and the average Joe? Absolutely. So don't you think, and again, I'm not disagreeing with it. I think people can do whatever the hell they want. People can call me a bean or a wetback. It don't bother me none. I'll be like, you're absolutely right. I'll give you my check. But... I think as a celebrity, I think there should be a difference to what you should say or can't say because there's always a camera somewhere. I'm going to say BS, and I'll tell you why. One of my favorites who doesn't live by that standard, Samuel L. Jackson. But he's black. Oh, well, okay. So, well, right. hey, so it's does, a double so, standard. Well, doesn't, doesn't that negate your entire argument? He but doesn't he, need to be held to a standard. Samuel L. Jackson he, he wrote built a, his career on that. Doesn't matter. The problem is they're over-sensationalizing it because she's a white woman in the South. OK, Jeez. and I'm not saying we should offend or hurt anybody. And again, I, you know, uh, what happened in the past with the whole slavery issue is the same. You know, when people talk about, you know, some of the Jews with what happened with Auschwitz. OK, I sympathize with all of them. But if you're in a room full of people and, and they're making these certain jokes and they're of that persuasion that Mike doesn't like to use. Now, do we know where this was? And in, in, I mean, was she in a room with friends or was she well, in a room with I'm not she know? Some of the part of the deposition was reading what this the person who stood here was a GM of one of her restaurants. Yes. And it was at the office of said restaurant. Yeah, then I'm going to say that this person just wants a paycheck. Okay, but see, the problem, though, is when you make that statement, this person, somebody's going to call and say, what do you mean this person? Black people? If that's the person, absolutely. <laughs> but it's not people as a whole is what I'm saying. And where, where, I'm going, where I'm arguing with Mike is that I, again, I, you know, I know that we've made jokes about each other and we've, you know, We've had different people in here. One of, our, one of our best friends in the world who feeds us all the time, he's Asian. And when he, when he, when he delivers the pizzas to us and he's late, what, 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 and man, I say, why he, are you late? He, he's a cranky individual, but man. But what does he say, though? <laughs> what does he say when he's late, Mike? Uh, the my people, the, you, know, the, you know my people can't drive. Right, okay, right That right. came from him. Okay, but and if again, Mike... Yeah, and but I, you see, there, he's making a correct statement. <laughs> <laughs> Asian oh. people can't drive for <laughs> crap. Period. <laughs> All right, if you want to weigh in on the topic, 855-693, guys. Finally, some intelligence is in the house because I have arrived. We'll be right back. Call the Three Guys Rant now. Would you like to comment? Get on the radio. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant. We supply the words, you paint the picture. AM 1050, KCAA. 
Hi, I'm Paul Lane, host of the KCAA Morning Show, and I'd like to take a few seconds to tell you about pollen burst. You may not know, but I've been confined to a wheelchair for over 20 years, and I've always looked for ways to increase my energy, mental clarity, and just feel good. Well, I found it in pollen burst. It's natural, delicious, and easy to take. And I think you should try some too. To find out more, email me at paul at kcaaradio.com. That's paul at kcaaradio.com. Hey, join me so we can burst together. Oh, man. Theticketsurgeon.com reaches at 855-WIN-4199. Did you get caught speeding, texting while driving, or doing anything else you weren't supposed to do? Give us a call. Don't miss work. Don't lose out on the money. Don't get any more points. What about your insurance? Let us fight for you. Theticketsurgeon.com at 855-WIN-4199. We are the Three Guys Rant, coming to you live every Thursday from 5 to 6. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in, because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen, and you never know what's going to happen. 855 69 guys G-U-Y-S, and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back from the break. I had to steal the mic from Arvin because Pinky and the Brain to my left over here. Uh, actually, it's going to be Pinky and the Brain Trust. That's what you've now become, Arvin. You are the Brain Trust. I like that. I'll take that. Okay, you'll take that. And um, what, what are we doing today? <laughs> Trying to take over the world? You know, that's funny because it's the only thing you can remember. I used to smoke a lot of weed before. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> While sitting around making uh, racial epithets? Um, yeah, man. Guys, have you been watching what's going on in Brazil? Yep. Um, there's a girl shaking her booty. <laughs> you know, the funniest part is how some of the headlines talk about the government did not expect this from their people. Well, you know what's amazing? It, it's power to the people, man. That's what Americans should do. I, you know, and it's uh, it's funny. As I was reading this over the last couple of days, I thought, oh, good Lord, you know, please for, for don't let Mike see these articles. Man. Those people have the balls to stand up to the government and let them know, you know what? You work for us, a I bunch said, of a-holes. As soon as, as, soon as Mike right? sees this, he's going to be on fire. And, and then the government already backed up on, on one of their proposals. Um, so they're rolling me. back the, the hike in and the public <laughs> can, transportation. For, for the average Joe that's listening, can we tell them what you're talking about? Okay, Joe. Thank you, because I have no idea what you're talking about. How, how do you live in America, okay, with 17 news channels and not know? Uh, because technically, uh, I live in my head, and it's uh, <laughs> okay. a, an Eth- Ethiopian in Brazil, plane, right? In Brazil in 2014. Don't you mean utopian? That's what I said. The World said Cup. Ethiopian. The World Cup. You know what the World Cup is, Ar- Ar- Arvin? Yeah. What so is the World, World Cup? Cup? Soccer. Okay. Yeah, right. he, coming he knows that he's a beaner. To Brazil. That's right. I'm okay. a beaner. What also is going to happen two years later in Brazil? 2016. I can do math. Okay. No. Not, not, not what is the number, you moron? <laughs> What's going to happen? Oh, uh, the Olympics. Very good. So. The end of the world? To pull off both the World Cup and the Olympics takes an astronomical amount of money. Now, Brazil. They're both going to be in Brazil? <laughs> Wow, that that country, <laughs> Mikey. That country's betting a thousand right now. I might smack him. Okay, so that country has had to spend a disproportionate amount of money they didn't have to begin with. I thought it was something like in the twenty billion dollar range. Actually, I think it's more like. than that. So now. let me get this straight. So that means that they've been taking all the one gallon jugs everybody has in their house full of pennies. They're taking it away from the people. Well, I mean, again, if you want to if you want to equate it that way, it almost is what's happening. So they decided that they were going to host both of these major world events. Now, to do that, they were hoping that a lot of the money they were going to get initially was going to come from uh, oil or sugar cane. Right. And they had also built some hydroelectric dams that was going to help power because prior to that, they were having severe power issues. So one of the things that they're not really publicizing anymore. First off, I'm going to say that's BS because that, that sign was probably written in Spanish. I'm going to say no because they're, they're trying to reach the they're trying to reach the regular world. Right. Okay. Okay. So, b- the biggest problem is immediately after they built the hydroelectric dams. Do you know what happened, Arvin? 
they collapsed? No, they started going into a severe drought, and it turns out that they miscalculated oh. the water levels. So now the hydroelectric dams that they were supposed to have unlimited power with. Now they're dammed. <laughs> now they're dammed. That's pretty good. Then they started building all of these stadiums, improving the infrastructure. They're having to get new buses that have wheelchair access. Right. They're having to put air conditioning on the buses because tourists don't want to ride on dirty, nasty buses. God, I don't want to ride on the buses here in this country. Well, okay. So what they did was they started raising fees, cutting services. It's, it's like a bunch of cockroaches just walking well, around. Well, but that's everywhere, though. So that, but that's, that's what they did. They started, they, number one, they started to increase fares in public transportation. Then uh, they're having infrastructure uh, problems when it comes to other things like police, fire, uh, services for the poor, and that kind of thing. So the, the, the populace got pissed and said, yeah, what, what the hell? You're spending all this money for tourists, and we can't get decent services here. So they've taken to the street. And the government reacted a little bit. And well, what was funny uh, is last week, giving up. last week they raised the bus fares. Right. Immediately, I thought, oh, when Mikey sees this, I'm never going to hear the end of it. The people took to the streets. So 24 hours later, the government said, okay, we're sorry, we're going to lower the bus fares. And they said, no. You know what? You've pissed us off so much now. We want free bus fare. I, I don't doubt that's what they're asking for. Because they said, you know what? Screw you and your bus reductions. We want more now. Because even they were surprised how many people assembled. See, that's what happens. You give somebody the hand and they want to suck on the teeth. <laughs> well, you see, that's what Americans should do. That's the problem. You see, those people in, in see, Brazil and in, in Europe, they know that the politicians work for them. They're here, not, they're not afraid. Here, you know, here we're afraid. The politicians, yeah, I know. Over there, they, they'll take to the streets. They shut the government down, and politicians react. Here, they take it and they just bend over, grab the ankles, and say, "Can I get some more?" Isn't that the way you end they your Friday night? No. Oh, all right. Look, look. There you were. You're asking for Spanish. There you go. For those of you streaming, if you're wondering what that's we're not talking Spanish, about, Spanish, Baboso. That's Portuguese. Whatever. That's the same thing. They're Jesus. all Mexican. That's, that's a different dialect, man. Whatever. You know what? Okay, you it's not in you English. You see signs and protesters. All I see is hot TNA all over that screen. <laughs> over that <laughs> screen. For those What's of up? you wondering, uh, we're streaming the Three Guys Rant Live at RantRadioNetwork.com right now, and. Um, you can see the pictures where Arvin is uh, ogling. So that's Brazilian what we women. need to do here. We take to the streets. Yeah, but see, the problem with and we you. tell people. You, you okay, know, we're not suffering like them. Look what at the that. H- They're taking the cop down. There what you do, go. What do you want us to protest here? Kick his ass. Hey, what do you want us to protest here? The government's inability to do get anything done. Oh, suck it. That's you it. and your BS, okay? Because we over That's here, it. we're an over-welfare state. Those people suffer. We don't suffer here. How do you know they suffer? Because they don't get welfare like we do. To start off with, let's start with the fact that nobody that I've seen so far in that country from the pictures we've seen right now is the size of anybody in this room. Okay, so? So they're suffering. Because they're not eating right. That's right. Okay. Oh, they're not so eating the right like is, we are. See, you always equate real world problems with the laziness that is America. Okay. So you like defending them, and you always say, oh, we're mean to the poor. Oh, we're mean to this. Oh, we're mean to that. But what do people say? Get off your ass. So to your point, if they won't get off their butts to protest, they're sure as hell not going to get off their butts to work. Now, let me ask you this. In all the pictures we've been showing, there is a lot of stadiums. Are those actual stadiums or are those uh, proposals for? No, man. World Cup, I think they had to build, was it six or eight stadiums? I was gonna say, I've seen about that many in yeah, the pictures. I don't know if that's necessarily a stadium that's already been built, but that's probably now, remember, a They're also getting ready for the Olympics. So they got to have the velodromes. They got to have the swimming centers. They got to have the, uh, the gymnastics centers. So, yeah, and, 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 I mean, I'm all for it. I think it's great, but. Get their forest. Let's go. Come on. I say build them because I might want to visit. <laughs> oh, so let's spend billions and billions of dollars because Arvin wants to visit. It's one of those that's things. Right. If you build it, they will come. And they're not going to is the problem. You know, that's going to be an issue. So now what they're saying is that they're hoping that people will stay away from World Cup, but they won't because soccer is too right. big. So they're going to build them, but yet they hope that they don't come? No, the people. The people. The people don't want tourism because they want the government to return the money to them. And what's amazing, there is yeah, but that makes some no high-profile soccer games going on right now, some World Cup qualifying games in brazil because it's gold cup right yeah this year is gold cup qualifying next year is world cup but that makes no sense if the country's already spent the money and they don't get the tourists to come in how are they going to replace that money because they're like mike okay. they're just going to print more they'll they'll they're the like the republicans here they're going to take cut more off their from nose. the poor they'll cut off their nose it. despite their face right. just to say i told you so just like our congress right now okay they, they don't want to pass just, the farm just bill because, because i have two ears doesn't mean i can hear both of you guys at the same time <laughs> i'm just saying let me hear your farm bill 
No, th they want to hold it up because th th they don't want to give. Uh, they want big uh, farms, farms that are that are millionaires, farmers that are millionaires, to keep getting subsidies. <laughs> and they, they're told th the Democrats, if you don't pass that, then we're going to cut food stamps. So it's like either you take care of the wealthy or screw the poor. But Phil says that's okay. Um, okay, first of all, <laughs> Phil never said that was okay. Oh. But Phil says that someday when he is wealthy, he wants to be taken care of too. Right. I like being taken care of every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not what you meant? No. But oh. So what I'm saying is the problem with Brazil, okay, we've spent the money. It's built. Get behind it. Instead, you know, they're going to cause a ruckus and see if they can't uh, See? Get behind it. Cheer. But if it was up see, to Mike, Mike wants to go over there and lead the, the, lead the burning is, of the stadiums. The problem is Mikey doesn't like get, getting behind it. He likes being in the front and somebody getting behind okay, him. So Mikey does like being on the receiving end. Oh, absolutely. But the problem with the receiving end is that the person giving it to him, okay, had to get there. So Mike's upset because then if the guy couldn't get free public transportation to get there, free condoms to protect himself, and then have somebody help push it in because he's too lazy to do his own job, Mike's upset. Porque si se lo meten llora y se lo sacan grita. Got it? Is that Portuguese? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. But I mean, I gotta say it does look, it does look pretty. I'm all for it. I say build a damn thing. Oh, for the love of all that is holy, it looks pretty. It looks pretty. So let's build it because <laughs> it looks pretty. It looks pretty, and I'd like to go one day. <laughs> I'll be in and out seven days tops. You guys can do whatever you want after that. <laughs> so screw the people. Wow. So Arvin I'm says, Arvin says uh, you know what? Arvin, Arvin was the tank driver at Tiananmen Square because he enjoyed driving the big tank. He, didn't, he doesn't mind. Arvin, do you know what Tiananmen Square was? Um, I don't know, but I'm still thinking about Mikey <laughs> saying screw the people. I'm planning on screwing as many of them as I can while I'm there for those seven days. You listen to the three guys ran on KCAA 1050 AM NBC News Radio out of the OC, the Inland Empire, and all the meth houses you can find. Stick around, we'll be right back. The three guys rant. Hi, I'm Aaron Michael Sanchez. And I'm Kelly V. Dolan. And you can listen to us every Thursday at 2 p.m. right here on KCAA Radio. What do we talk about, Kelly? We talk about everything from entertainment to business and tech, and we have a few laughs in between. And we <laughs> dance a whole lot. In fact, if you want to watch us every day, you can go to AaronAndKellyLive.com. That's AaronAndKellyLive.com. Check it out. Hi, I'm Paul Lane, host of the KCAA Morning Show, and I'd like to take a few seconds to tell you about Pollen Burst. You may not know, but I've been confined to a wheelchair for over 20 years, and I've always looked for ways to increase my energy, mental clarity, and just feel good. Well, I found it in Pollen Burst. It's natural, delicious, and easy to take, and I think you should try some too. To find out more, email me at paul at kcaaradio.com. That's paul at kcaaradio.com. Hey, join me so we can burst together. Thank you, Inland Empire, for listening to KCAA Radio. Streaming live from Los Angeles and worldwide, The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Check out our website at www.thetreeguysrant.com. The Three Guys Rant starts now. All right, we're back for the final segment of the show. I know and people are saying, yeah, I finally. Know, thank God, who's up next? But anyway, Arvin's got a topic... And I painfully want to turn the mic back over to him and um, let him cover it. Arvin, get the mouth out of your throat. <laughs> get the what? You said the mouth out of his throat. The mic. You said mouth. Yeah, you did say mouth. That's why I was like, what in the hell are you talking about? Now, I, actually, this question goes out to both of you guys. I, I know that you used to love Kim. I don't think you do anymore. No. Mikey? Yes. You still love her? Yep. Okay. Now, now the, the second part question. Mikey, I know that you're gay, but how bad does it have to be for you to claim Kim Kardashian's baby? It doesn't have to be bad at all, man. You would just do it? Yeah. Well, the reason I bring it up is is Kerry, Kerry Rhodes, as far as I can tell, he still plays for the New York Jets, saying that he's sick and tired of people saying that he's a gay man. That's that's Kerry Rhodes. That's Kim Kardashian up on the screen. Again, oh, anybody streaming? Oh, 
Anybody? Sh- Good lord! You see, see that's that's when she was still in her prime. Woo! She was still in her prime. So again, anybody listening, make sure to go to kcaaradio.com or the three guys rant.com. You'll be able to see everything that we see. But again, that looks fine. But every other picture that I seen about this guy, he's either hugged up or somebody sitting on his lap or whatever the deal is of the same of the same sex, which is fine, whatever he wants to do. But he's so sick and tired of people telling him that he's gay that he's saying he's the father of Kim Kardashian's new baby. You know what's funny? Kanye would look at him and say, oh, I can't touch that boy. Because <laughs> <laughs> he would pommel his face in. So, I don't know. I, again, I just, I, I don't know what the hell the big deal is. I just think it's funny. I think it's more of a publicity stunt than anything else. Because every other picture I saw is him with another guy. The, the pictures that you see that don't have another guy in it, those are the only, the only two that I found. So is that your story? That's my story. Is that what we're finding under your story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll go with that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. All right. I wanted to talk about something that would apply to Mike. For you know, we've got about eight minutes left. Sesame Street over the years has come out with many, you know, videos. Helpful, you know, videos, educational for children, you know, different how to's, how to cope with, you know, an elderly, a death in the family, they have? The, the loss. So yeah, you know, they, they have these different segments. How to go on Sesame Street? No, yes. there's video series. There's video okay. series, okay? Well, did Sesame Street, in an effort to modernize, added a new character. And um, is it the same one from Dave Chappelle? No, but in this new character, it's going to teach or it's going to talk to children about how to cope with a parent in jail. <laughs> um, is this character is, black? I was going to say, is it, did this get released down south? <laughs> was this a character Mexican? Because <laughs> I, sure. I know it's not, it's not going to be a white character. I guarantee you that. <laughs> All right. You know, it's funny. I would put money on it. It's not going to be a white character. The character, I think, was brown. Exactly. Okay. That's what okay, I thought. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Light brown or dark brown? Brown. Okay. Hey, look, I'm actually getting a phone call by a gentleman of the name of Brown. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so the character is brown. So I, I guess it can be ambiguous, if you will. So maybe it's a white person with a tan. Okay. Alan, can you see if you can find that but character? There's no ambiguity there, look, man. he's brown. Wait, that that, that that's a character. That, yeah. that that could go either way. I'm almost going to say that that's that's one of our San Bernardino meth head listeners because <laughs> of the blue hair. Okay, so he he has a pair a parental figure in incarcerated. That is just the stupidest thing I've ever thought I've ever heard. I, 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 I gotta say, how long do you think that got shot back and forth among the executives before they said okay? I don't think that long. Not in today's world with so many people. Well, it was they, with, the, have, with the large number of, of parents or large number of the you know our uh, prison population, I can see it being a relative a re, you know a relative whoa, whoa, topic. Whoa, whoa. Why does there got to be a Latina in the back in, in the background of that? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's just wrong right there. Hey man, I, I don't know what to tell you. That is just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Wait a minute, man. she looks Puerto Rican. I'm okay with how, that. How are you gonna? I mean, if your parent is in jail, they obviously did something. I'm going to say, if, go you're, if you're a parent in jail, the last thing you're sitting at home doing is watching Sesame Street. Uh, or wanting to cope with it, because your family's going to shield you, and, and right. you're not going to... I just don't get it, man. I'm saying this is a lawsuit. I'm sorry. F- where did you two... Stupid. W- where the hell do the two of you watch... They're going to shield you? Really? Yeah. Okay. Most parents nowadays will, will do that. If the child is young enough to be watching Sesame Street, and a parent ends up in jail... Most of the family are going to shield that kid. I'm going to call BS because usually the parent that's in jail is associated with a certain class of individuals that are all sitting around touting the fact that your daddy's in jail because he did this or that. Okay? So I call BS on both of you. Oh, you're talking about gangbangers. Oh, I'm sorry because there's a whole lot of church-going, God-fearing Christian individuals in jail wrongly accused because they're all innocent. Yes, oh, there's a lot of them. That's what I'm they, sorry. When they go to jail and they find Jesus. Oh. Did you say? Didn't you know that that's where Jesus, Jesus lives? Okay, Did apparently you say he does. Gangbang. Because where everybody goes, everybody <laughs> goes in. They they always find them. Uh, uh, that's all I'm still hearing. Okay, gangbang. I'm sorry. I'm going with the individuals that that is directed at are clearly not necessarily white-collar criminals, okay? So they're going to only air that in uh, the East L.A. area, Compton? No, but there's, I, I think there's a large percentage of the population. That's just freaking le- the Muppet. The Muppet is in jail. The what Muppet's the- parent is in jail. Oh, yeah, you, know, you know that that Muppet is the bottom. 
Just no, okay, so hell? are they going to bring a character that is going to be, you know, it's going to have it two daddies or two mommies? I'm sure that's I'm sure that's in the works. You know, I'm sure that's in the works. That's so, so, they bring, so, so they bring the inmate character first. I'm because gonna, this is America. I'm going to say. We can tolerate inmates. I mean, I don't know. And I'm cutting Arvin off because it's just going to be nonsense. But where I was arguing with Arvin yesterday, for example, Jennifer Lopez is the executive producer of a new show called The Fosters. Right. Okay. Oh, it's where, a great show. Where it's two um, lesbian moms. Right. So lesbian Oh, is couple. that what it is? Yeah, it's a lesbian couple. Lesbian couple. I'm out. They're having, you know, people are an uproar already because it's on ABC Family. Mm -hmm. So when they're interviewing Jennifer Lopez, she says, that's when you know you're doing something right because you've pissed off a lot of people. So that's why there's been shows in the past where people are in foster care because their parents are in jail. I think it's a progression. And I'm going to say those kids are not Look. watching Sesame Street. <laughs> that's well, what I'm saying, I'm man. just saying that I don't think it's all bad that they're talking about some of the issues and the taboos. And I do believe that the lesbian, you know, what is it, lesbian, gay, transgender persuasion, that Mike keeps using that term, is going to figure out how to move into this segment. I'm still going to say. Yeah, but to me, it's going it's to open up, open up a can of worms because you're going to expose a lot of kids that don't know what jail is, never had any or know or have anybody in their family has been in jail, and now they may start asking, well, what is jail? Why are they in jail? What? How do I go to jail? Versus... Uh, <coughs> Same-sex marriage was just an issue that everybody talks about. That most people, most people know or. Does you your know, son know? Huh? Does your son know? About so what? you would rather talk about same-sex couples than having a parent in jail? Yes. What the hell? To me, it's just stupid. Okay. okay well, I mean, obviously, to you, it is. I'm going to say that any long-term executive that's been at Sesame Street for years since the very beginning probably had a hard time with that. I don't think so. Though. I think it, it's it's the way you know it's currently where we're at in society. They're touching on these different issues that I think get overshadowed by bias. Maybe, maybe it's something that was br brought in or, or suggested by uh, the guy who had his hand up Elmo's ass. That he might used have to like to play with little boys. And again, that guy was black. <laughs> <laughs> what what does color have to do with this? I'm just just stating the facts. I'm just wow, stating the facts. Stating the you are facts. a freaking moron, you know. Okay, uh, Arvin at the three Arvin guys, at the three guys rant dot com. Okay. What's wrong with you? Yeah, thank you, Alan. So, um, well, I I don't think Sesame Street is that. You know, I, I I all I'm saying is that with their viewership and what they're doing, I I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing to have the conversation with your children of don't do bad things, don't steal, don't kill, don't rob, don't, so you don't end up in jail. Okay, so then maybe you, you build a character that ends up in jail because of his actions. But you don't want, then no, you can, you can because then what you're doing is you're allowing Stockholm Syndrome, if you will, where they're going to start. They're going to come kidnap your kid or something? No, but then they're going to start sympathizing with the kid now, who went to jail. My only question is, if the Muppet is in jail, and it's always supposed to be a bad place. <laughs> What, is, why are you listening is, to Mike? The Muppet's not in jail. It just said Muppet Parent in jail. That's what the it Muppet's said. The Muppet's Parent, not that, the Muppet. He's still a Muppet. He's just an older Muppet. When <laughs> the Muppet, he, when a, the Muppet gets out, he's a convict out, Muppet. He's <laughs> <laughs> the convict Muppet. When that Muppet gets out, is he going to have a little teardrop in his eye <laughs> and, and a spider web on the elbow? I don't know. Maybe they I'll don't show up. the It'd be parent. funny. They showed him in jail, right? He was kind of skinny. I wonder if he's going to come back all buff. They don't show <laughs> the Muppet Parent. They okay. should though. They should. They they should do like a jail jail visitation day. <laughs> you guys are honked up you know what? on so many I, levels. I would man. watch that. No, what? that <laughs> would, I would watch that. That would be a good show. Or, huh? or if they do a scare straight Muppet edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that'd be a good stuff. Uh, I I would definitely so, watch that. Man. You know what? I just want to do. I know we're coming down to the wire. Just want to do seconds, a quick buddy. shout out to Rancho A Go Go Food Truck, Schmuck Truck Food Truck, Firehouse Grill Food Truck. Shelly, uh, the, the Fry Girl Truck, um, they're going to be actually here in Whittier tomorrow at a Boys and Girls Club event here on Whittier Boulevard. In the Joanne's Whittier. Fabrics on Whittier Boulevard. Joanne's Fabrics on Whittier Boulevard Food Truck Festival. If you can show up, you're going to be supporting All three of these the clowns cats. will be there live and in person. Yeah, eating up. And then you can finally see who's calling you cracking. And we're pointing Arvin out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Have you for listening. Week.